Hello and welcome to Overdrive, Ryle, and uh, well, should I say welcome back to India for that matter as well. You also had your first launch uh, after coming back and taking charge of Audi in India and you just launched uh, the new A3. Now, the A3's intent was to bring about a significant volume growth uh, for the brand uh, in India, but over the last, uh, and this is from the last two years uh, that, that when it was first launched, but in the last two years, uh, a lot has changed. The market dynamics have uh, altered significantly. There's a bigger shift towards SUVs. So in this current market scenario, what uh, kind of a role do you think will the A3 have to play? The A3 is very important for us, uh, especially if you look at the past. We've launched it in 2014. At that time, it won the global award yeah, of the compact sedan of the year. Now, having launched this car uh, um, again in 2017, uh, it's a special occasion for us. It's 10 years of Audi in India. Um, and at the same time, um, yeah, Audi will start a new strategy. That's uh, the year of Audi Reloaded. Having said this, the Audi A3 sedan will play a significant role in attracting especially younger target audience, uh, um, so-called upgraders, people that uh, buy an Audi for the, for the first time. Obviously, we also have an as an entry level, uh, the Q3. Uh, but the A3 is a very good alternative. Speaking of shifting to SUVs, uh, you've got uh, the Q2 coming out in the future. Uh, could that be a game changer for Audi? CQ2, we're currently evaluating whether it's, uh, it's the right thing uh, to be launched in the market or not. Uh, our core focus is now on, on the other models, to be honest, yeah, on A3 and Q3, bringing that to the next level. Obviously, we have a lot of new products coming in. I told you uh, just a few seconds ago, uh, it's the year of Audi Reloaded. Audi Reloaded means basically also uh, 10 product launches this year. Um, one of yeah, the product launches was there last week with the A3. Your predecessor had uh, spoken about doubling volumes, taking it from, um, from the existing 10,000 bracket roughly to about 20,000. And... Uh, you intended to do that, Audi intended to do that by 2018. Aren't those goalposts realistic? You said it rightly, we want to be at the top. And this is a clear vision that, that we have, yeah, that I have for Audi in India, uh, to be the number one luxury car maker in India. Uh, it's the clear target, it's a clear vision. Why? Because we belong there, very simple, without uh, meaning that in an arrogant way, but, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a clear vision we have. And we want to do anything that is necessary to get there. However, in a sustainable manner. So we don't have to do it overnight. We don't have to be there tomorrow. And uh, I, don't, I will not tell you we have to be there in 2018 or so. It has to be in a sustainable manner. Having said this, once we reach there, we want to stay there. Uh, but is that a challenge considering the given uh, the, the recent scandal, <coughs> with, uh, the diesel issue that uh, the Volkswagen group faced in general? Is that something of a problem for Audi? Uh, are you facing any challenges on that front? No, I think the, the market uh, dynamics in India are now positive in the luxury segment. The, uh, the luxury segment is moving uh, in, a, in a positive manner. I think uh, not only for us, but also the entire segment is, uh, is growing. Um, for us, fortunately, a double-digit growth, uh, which, is, uh, which is good. Your competitor has uh, revamped almost its entire lineup. It's uh, aggressively marketing its product lineup and uh, has expanded all of its offerings. It's almost got everything that it offers globally in the Indian market today. Uh, it's even built stronger residual values around its products. They even utilize uh, the media far more effectively. So how do you suppose Audi intends to counter that strategy? I would say that's a very selective uh, <laughs> perception from your side. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, our customers appreciate what, we've, what we're doing. I think uh, to be on a, on, a, on a positive side is also we are doing a lot of things differently now. Um, uh, the good start is the A3. Yeah? Uh, the subject is two kinds of a swagger, so we've basically positioned the A3 Cabriolet uh, and the A3 Sedan. Um, also playing that young and innovative and progressive brand appeal that Audi has. We have a competitive advantage, to be honest, because we are perceived as the youngest brand in India. Um, factually, we are also, because our average uh, customer age is around 40 years, uh, which is good for us, yeah? because obviously, for us, and if I speak about sustainability also of the brand, um, we want to keep people in our brand. So uh, once a customer enters, for example, with the A3 or the Q3, we want to maintain that customer within the Audi family, yeah? keep him sustainably in the brand. As I told you already, we are launching a 
new products. Um, to be a little more precise, we are also entering segments which are completely new in the market. And Audi is known for being a trendsetter or first mover. Let's take the Q7, for example. We, are, we were the first one to enter uh, in the luxury SUV uh, market um, yeah, with, uh, with that car, and that was a tremendous success. Uh, the Q3 was the, was the first mover. The A3 sedan was the first mover. And the A5, uh, to mention this, will also be the first mover in its segment uh, because that car we're also going to launch this year. And um, having said this, we're not only trying to look at um, fulfilling customer requirements, but obviously at uh, exceeding them. What is going to be your number one priority here at Audi? For, there are a lot of priorities. Uh, now, uh, as you said, uh, I'm here now for, yeah, for a few weeks. Um, to be honest, uh, I have a fantastic team uh, behind me. I think that's, uh, that's something which is very, uh, very unique. I'm very happy to, to have the, the people as part of my team. Uh, very committed, very dedicated. And that passion that these people have for Audi India, I want, to, and that's my probably the, the biggest priority, to bring that uh, passion also to the dealer network and to our customers. Over the last 12 months, there have been significant changes uh, where policy is concerned and a lot of that has affected the automotive industry. What's your take on whatever has been happening so far? I think uh, positive and uh, challenging, both. Um, positive in the sense, for example, take GST, what is happening now. We appreciate there's a much easier tax structure. I think that makes life easier for everyone yeah, to understand also everything while we're evaluating the, the impact of it. Yeah, I think still it makes sense to have something like, uh, like a GST. Aspects that were challenging, according to me, were, for example, the, uh, the uh, diesel ban in the NCR, uh, BS3, uh, even if we are, were not impacted. I think there are a couple of examples where maybe manufacturers should have had more time to be prepared for it. Yeah, because um, why they are they are okay yeah okay to do so while you, there may be a reason for uh, or justification to do things like this, it's always important also to see the other side and then uh, yeah have a preparation time for it. Um, let's say for BSX, yeah we have now the preparation time for it and that's something which is good. It's well appreciated. At the same time, I'm sure the government will ensure that the fuel quality will be there. Uh, but there's time to get that prepared. So um, having said this, yeah, it's very dynamic.